Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. Our topic, high value men find this beautiful in women. Now, really quickly, uh, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video, the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Lastly, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a private group where you can have uh, direct access to me on a regular basis, and based on the questions you ask, I shoot personalized videos just for you. So check out the link below to my VIP group. All right, let's talk about what my high value men find beautiful. Mm. <laughs> I think the heart uh, represents beauty uh, in women. You know, before I get started in the particulars here, I, I want to share with you that I recognize that many of you are very, very frustrated in the dating, mating, and relating realm. I hear it continually. In fact, this morning I was chatting with a Instagram friend of mine, a very sweet young lady, and she was sharing with me some of her relationship frustrations. And given that in particular that men can be actually rather unkind to women. I mean, it's it's very sad to see this. And it, I, I do believe that we have had such a huge shift in the last 20 years from in a more organic way of getting to know people and sadly in a more virtual way. And the challenge with the virtual way of getting to know someone is that most of the time we are meeting total strangers. We're meeting total strangers. We don't know their values. We don't know their family background. We don't have any connection to any part of their life. And it makes it more difficult to actually build that deeper connection with another human being because you've got to sift through the muck to find out, is this person legitimate? Is this person legitimate? If you follow my channel, you know I'm a very protective person. I always say I wish I could be there on your first date when a guy comes to your door with the shotgun, pointing it at him saying, what are your intentions with my little sister or my friend? Because on some level you have to, at least my invitation for you, is to become your own protector and not from a place of closing off your heart or protecting your heart. It's about being more intentional in the process and understanding the mechanics of a healthy, happy relationship because we've literally been indoctrinated here, at least in particular in the United States, that chemistry equals relationship success. I repeat that, that chemistry equals relationship success. And what we have learned, at least in the coaching industry, that that's the furthest thing from the truth. Chemistry is just one component. And you have to recognize that within chemistry, oftentimes it's lust or limerence and limerence is extreme infatuation. It's not, it's a chemical, chemistry is a chemical thing. It's chemicals released from your brain into your body that makes you feel good. And if you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, I wanna share this with you all. And I'm gonna show you this here. You can see at the tip of the iceberg is chemistry and above the water line is attraction. It's the first thing we see. And yet below the water line is compatibility. And where here we have to look at shared values, blendable lifestyles and emotional maturity. And sadly, we are swimming here, at least particularly in the United States, with a very dysfunctional, dysfunctional group of individuals. This is true of men and women alike. In fact, I believe that the vast majority of people have weak emotional skills and weak relationship skills. And if you're not familiar with this chart that I created, and by the way, I want you to notice here in the asterisk, this is not a fact, this is an opinion, but let me put this here. It says emotional maturity and relationship skills. I'm here to say that 20% of the population has clinical issues they're narcissists, they're bipolar, they're borderline personality, and worse, maybe even sociopathic. So there's a big percentage of the population that is really messed up. And then over here, I say that the 20% of the population is healthy from an emotional, relation, emotional maturity and relationship skills, and I'm being ridiculously generous when I say 20%. It might be closer to 3%. And then the vast majority of everybody else is in the dysfunctional phase. 
So it's no wonder it's a mess out there trying to connect with another human being. And everybody, and, and I'm sorry, ladies, many of you have this fantasy that it should just be so magical. It just should so be easy. All you have to do is sit back in your feminine energy and the guy is just going to claim you. This whole energy thing is a crock if you don't understand human behavior. It's a crock if you don't understand that the vast majority of people, and this is true of men and you ladies as well, have weak emotional skills and weak relationship skills. This is why I'm such a big proponent that before you become intimate with a guy, that you purchase two copies of this book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. These are eight separate conversations you have with someone to determine if you're truly compatible with one another. Because here's the thing, most humans operate at a very surface level in the initial stages of dating. In fact, most humans operate based on looks, based on status, based on material things, and they don't go beneath the surface to find out the deeper things that are more important. This is why I'm gonna share with you something really quickly. I put together my notes here, <laughs> all right? Um, below the surface, family values, their bias, their beliefs and assumptions, their concept of justice, their manners. I know sometimes you're on first dates and you notice guys or, or women with poor manners and right off the bat you can tell something about a person who treats other people poorly. Are they competitive? This person I was speaking to this morning um, is in New York, and it is an incredibly materialistic, competitive place to be dating, and not competitive to be dating, but people there are constantly in competition with one another. And people are in competition with one another, oftentimes make poor partners or poor individuals to be in relationship with one another because it's all about getting the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Here's another important factor is their humor. And this takes time to really determine someone's humor. Their work ethic, that's another thing to be, to be a pay attention to. And you can't notice these things on a first, second, or third date. It takes time to uncover the things below the surface. Their attitude on health and fitness, now that's something you can find out pretty quickly. And I think this is critically important people's attitude on health and fitness because the fact of the matter is, do you want to have a short-lived relationship because someone dies early? Or do you want to have a long-lived relationship because people believe and value health? Their gender roles, this is an important thing and there is a lot of confusion on the whole gender roles. I'm more a big proponent of treating a relationship like a two-lane street. You're both mutually investing in one another. You're both mutually investing in one another. Here's another issue, body image issues. Oh my God, humans, men and women have, many men and women have body image issues. I mean, for men, it might be their height or their hair. For women, it might be their figure. It might be, oh my gosh, well nowadays with the Kardashians, it's all about having a, I like big butts and I cannot lie. <laughs> Excuse my little joke there. Um, and what's their level of empathy? What's their level of vulnerability? What's their level of authenticity? And what's their level of transparency? Because an emotionally mature person operates differently. A high value man operates differently than the vast majority of people out there because a high value man is emotionally mature. He's emotionally mature. His actions consistently match his words. He has victor consciousness and not victim consciousness. In other words, he takes personal responsibility for his choices. He understands the value of fighting fair. And what that means is you, if there's conflict in a, in a situation, the other, you listen to the other person's point of view and you accept the other person's point of view as being true for them and you do the same for them, right? And they have a level of empathy as I shared earlier. And empathy isn't just I can feel your feelings. Empathy is... I care about your feelings, and more importantly, I care about my own feelings. Many of you know I've written a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? It's a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, so you can actually start leaning into your feelings in a more empowered way. By the way, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. And the fifth sign of emotional maturity is transparency. 
you know, I'm here to say we don't have time to screw around. It is time to get radically honest very early on, to get radically honest with one another and to ask the tougher questions. But Jonathan, all the other dating coaches tell me not to ask questions. Folks, I'm here to say it is time to interrogate people because you don't have enough, just like I have that shotgun out there, it's time to really interrogate people. And listen, I say this a little tongue in cheek, but what I mean is ask deeper questions. In fact, my whole private coaching program is designed to lean into what are the deeper questions to ask someone right from the get-go so you don't waste your time with the wrong person. If you'd like some support, check out the link to a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Okay, what do men find beautiful in a woman? Or at least high value men, because here's the thing. Emotionally immature people, they're attracted to the rules-based way of dating, which is play hard to get, be very difficult, and that will temporarily hook the guy but then you're gonna to have to play that game the rest of your life and that is exhausting and it doesn't work. High value men, what they find most beautiful in a woman. These are the women that have looked at their entire life from the 40,000 foot level and say, look, I've had bad experiences, but I'm not gonna let it define me. I've had situations that didn't go my way. I'm not gonna let that define me. I've even been of cruel to other people. I'm not gonna let that define me. What makes a person I think most beautiful is when they can lean into their sovereignty, when they can lean into their self-love, when they can lean into their true emotional self and say, I'm gonna be vulnerable, I'm gonna be authentic, I'm gonna be transparent because an open heart is more beautiful than a closed heart. And sadly, many of you have developed a closed heart. I see this when I witness women literally watching these forums on narcissists. When you're listening and watching videos on narcissists as an example over and over and over again, it will harden your heart. And I gotta tell you something, reading dating apps today is like looking at, <laughs> it's like looking at a war zone. I don't want any cheaters, I don't want any liars, I don't want any of this, I don't want any of that. And I'm here to say that's not very attractive. It's like I've gone on first dates with women and I can literally see every man that's ever hurt her standing right behind her on an energetic level. And that's not going to attract love in your life. Because what would love do and how love responds first off starts off for compassion for oneself compassion for oneself and then compassion for others. Because here's the thing, we can judge people as being bad or wrong but that's gonna create a closed heart. And I'm here to invite you to open your heart to a sense of forgiveness. And forgiveness simply means forgiving love. Forgiving, start by giving yourself love <laughs> with an injection of love. In fact, my coffee mug today says, do all things with love, do all things with love. And if you can't see my t-shirt, it says, I've got your back. And you can see this person's missing a back and this person has the back. And I want you to operate from that premise of like, look, listen, this isn't gonna happen on a first, second, or third date. And I know many of you do operate from the premise, I've got your back. I want to invite you to allow a man to have your back as well. And one of the best ways to create that is with an open heart. Now that doesn't, as my father used to say, you can put your faith in God, but don't forget to tie up your horse. Actually, my father used to say, because my heritage is Turkish, you can put your faith in Allah, don't forget to tie up your camel. I'm not here to say be a doormat in any sense. I'm here to offer you a different way of looking at this, because here's the thing. I can tell you all the things that are wrong out in the dating realm. And it's good to know all of the, the pit holes, the holes in the sidewalk, it's good to know those. And at the same time, I wanna invite you to shift the narrative from the past hurt and pains and ask yourself this, what positive things did I learn about myself in each one of those relationships that probably didn't work out? Let me repeat that. What positive things did I learn about myself? I can tell you something. I have a very anxious attachment style. Can some of you relate? And I've been in relationship with people who are emotionally avoidant. And that push-pull, that push-pull, that push-pull over a long enough period of time made me realize 
that no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. I'm repeat that, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. In fact, what does my, my thing say here? I'm enough, <laughs> you can't see it, it's upside down right now. I'm enough. The second thing I invite you to do after you've said, what positive things did I learn about myself? I invite you to look at what was good about each relationship. Look for the good instead of focusing on what went wrong. And then I want you to lean into something even more powerful because this is what would love do and this is how love would respond. And that is, what are you most grateful for from each relationship? And again, from a positive perspective, not a judgmental perspective. Folks, if you want to shift your narrative with men, having an open heart. I had a client who uh, was in her mid-60s when she met the love of her life. I mean, the first love of her life, she was in her mid-60s. And one of the fundamentals she adopted before she met him was this idea, it's raining great men. It's raining great men. It's raining great men. And the other thing she started right from the beginning of the relationship was radical honesty, vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. She was building intimacy right from the beginning of the relationship. And if you're not familiar with two books, I want to introduce. This book is out of print right now, but it's called Oral Sex. But I want you to Google this book or look it up on Amazon because there's other recommended books reading. Talking and Listening Your Way to Passionate Intimacy. And another great book to piggyback on that by Barbara DeAngelis is called How to Make Love All the Time. How to Make Love All the Time. Folks, high value men appreciate women who lead the emotional facet of the relationship. I'm gonna repeat that, high value men, emotionally mature men appreciate women who are the container of the emotional intimacy of the relationship. And this is a great book to start from the very beginning. We don't have time to mess around waiting the whole game of like, oh, let's just give them a chance. And you know, six weeks, 12 weeks in, we notice how messed up they are. I'm here to say start from the very beginning with radical honesty, with vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency, because that's beautiful to a high value man. We appreciate you, you being the container of the emotional intimate aspects of the relationship. And it's going back to my book, chapter one, speak your truth, do it with kindness. And chapter nine, if it's sincere and from the heart, you really can't say the wrong thing to the right guy. So are you with me? Are you going to be more open, more vulnerable, more authentic, more transparent? And I don't mean from a doormat way as you've been in the past. I'm talking in a radically honest way by being intentional, by being demonstrative, by being effusive right from the get-go because you won't waste time with the wrong guy. And let me just tell you this, when you do meet that great high value man, he's going to appreciate that you've set the stage, you've set the, the pathway for relationship success. And that's my invitation for every one of you. Are you with me? Are you gonna join me on this? Please give me an amen, give me a thumbs up and please let me know. All right, we've covered a lot today. I hope you found value in this. By the way, again, check out all the links below. By the way, my Instagram link is there as well. If you want to connect with me, is there. Uh, check out my book. Check out my group membership, Midlife Love Mastery. Check out my uh, a free discovery call with me as well. All right, I think this will be a good place to wrap up this video. And if you know me, you know I always do it the same way. First off, I'm going to give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all have more, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.